Diana has almost an iconic place in our community because of her art. When you think of Tucson and you think of Tucson art, you envision a Diana Madeiras painting. But that really is only one side of who she is. She's been fortunate and successful, but she's taken that success and she's given back to the community in so many ways. Before my sister, Diana Madeiras, became an iconic artist in Tucson, creating beautiful paintings of her beloved Sonoran Desert, before she had been repeatedly honored for generously supporting a broad range of deserving charities and for using her breathtaking paintings to raise and then donate some $200,000 through her Art for Animals Foundation. She was a young girl in New Jersey, the daughter of an exceptionally skilled veterinarian developing a deep connection to animals while living with me and our brother in an apartment attached to the veterinary hospital founded by our parents in the 1950s. One of my jobs at the hospital was to raise the wild animals that were dropped off. And many times they died. And I would pray for magical powers in my hand so I could save them. And now I can paint them and give them eternal life. She's helped not only the wildlife center, she helps the zoo, the Humane Society. She loves animals and she's done a lot of paintings of bobcats and javelina and coyotes that came from our center. Diana's like family. She has been really instrumental in giving me the confidence that we could do this. We could raise the money and build a good facility to deal with all the rescues needed for the wildlife around Tucson and eight counties, all of Southern Arizona. Lisa Bates and her husband, Pete Leininger, founded Tucson Wildlife Center some 20 years ago to help injured, sick, and orphaned wild animals that have been hit by cars, poisoned, and simply crowded out by development. From humble roots, Tucson Wildlife Center has grown into a 14-acre facility, helping about 3,000 animals a year with a state-of-the-art, fully equipped hospital. We do emergency medical care, we do surgeries, uh, radiographs, just like a human hospital. And then they go into ICU or uh, rehabilitation and we get them back out to their families released back to the wild as quickly as possible. She's coming out. One of Diana's most amazing feats was depicting the poignant story of a popular golf course dwelling goose named Lucy in this painting that raised $20,000 in minutes at the Wildlife Center's annual charity auction the bird had been critically injured and several hospitals had turned her away before Tucson Wildlife Center took her in and saved her life to the delight of her country club fans. Tucson Wildlife Center brought her back to her pond where she lived. There were about 30 members of the club that came and the TV cameras were there and it was a big event for Lucy to be released back into her pond. It was a wonderful feeling to see this goose saved and then returned to her environment, which is the whole goal of the Tucson Wildlife Center. In 2018, as benefit committee chair, Diana helped raise the most money ever, enabling the center for the very first time to hire veterinarians to be on site every day. Now, rather than scrambling to find help when injured animals arrive, there's an experienced doctor in-house. Sometimes an animal can be in pain or suffering or needs surgery and we're very grateful, very, very grateful for the opportunity to do this because the animal gets immediate attention of the highest standard. Of all her philanthropy, the once little girl who helped the animals says this is her most meaningful accomplishment ever, bringing on the next generation of skilled doctors to carry forward our father's legacy, who at age 91 is no longer able to practice. Diana has found her own unique calling through her tremendous artistic gift, creating iconic paintings to help end the suffering of these stunningly beautiful creatures who are born to be wild.
I absolutely feel like it's our duty to help these animals. We have encroached on their environment. We have made it difficult for them to survive. And if we can do something to restore them to health and return them to their environment, that's what we should be doing.